What was that? Okay. Just, just mute your mic, Adam. Yeah. And with an abrupt transition, apparently, because apparently I forgot to put fade on the audio as well, we are now back after a month's hiatus with all kinds of fun things happening. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a 5th Ed D&D homebrew campaign, which we decided three years ago. No, it can't be three years ago. We started this like three years ago, but a couple of years ago, we decided to start streaming this and seeing how it was going. Uh, we are in the midst of the beginning of the start of the fresh, brand new space, which is an alternate campaign, because one of our players simply cannot do online, which is fine. Uh, but we do have our other players here. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm the one who um, decided this was a good idea, I guess, uh, and uh, has put together a world of Omatia, which I've been slowly filling out. The alt game takes place 1,000 years before the uh, the current timeline is set in the time of the Great Confusion, a time which has also been lost to history. Currently taking place in a small inlet called Silver Moon Bay on the west coast of, oh, uh, did I say Icro or Eskis? I think it's Eskis. Which is actually, Eskis. Yeah. Uh, in the kingdom of Alaria. Well, that's enough for me. Let my play players introduce themselves, starting on my left with Silas. Uh, my name is Pat. I am playing uh, Silas Marsh, uh, Illusionist. Hi, I'm Marie. I am playing Annie. She is a rogue. Forgot what she was first. It's been a little while, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half-orc cleric of Ignis. All right. And I want to remind you that you can see these episodes later if you happen to tune in and not happen to have the time to stay. Uh, they'll go up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. It may be somewhat delayed as I am forgetful to put video up, but you'll be able to find it there. Now, to recap where we had been, uh, the group had taken a job off a job board. Missing cattle was the name of the job. Led them out to the Winthrop farm. On the way to the Winthrop farm though they found themselves besieged as the road was crossed uh, was cut off and several bandits came out of the woods. However the bandits were bested one of whom actually perished in their uh, failed assault the others running off and rushing off into the woods. The group found themselves perhaps drawing the ire of the diamond a, a local businessman or businesswoman of ill repute, I guess you might say. We saw a little bit of that in the backstory as well. You made your way out to the Winthrop Farm, which is somewhat of a remote farm, where they primarily do uh, cattle and sheep during um, the cooler months, and they do have some crops and hire on some workers to come out. There you found the elderly Winthrops, Rex and Alma, a couple of delightful farmers, uh, who had been having some issues, uh, some cattle gone missing recently, and Alma had thought she had spied something in the barn, a shadow of some so sort. When you guys went out to take a look to see what was the matter, you indeed did see a dark, shadowy creature form thing, which then a battle ensued. The battle was rough, as this thing was... Very dangerous to the touch. I think Medric faced the, the brunt of that. After already having faced the brunt of a previous battle. So a little, uh, little worn out. But uh, you managed to not only drive back the shadow. But reveal that there was a creature trapped within. A young uh, woman who appears to also be a ghost. She introduced her name as Sedona. But she suffered from the great confusion as well. A loss of memory of recent events. Like the last six months to a year, roughly, no one can really remember exactly what happened. All Medric remembers, for example, is setting sail to go to war. 
And then the next memory is returning to port, apparently having won the war. But who they fought and where exactly is forgotten. Maybe Midrand got really drunk. Who knows? <laughs> you know, for six or eight months. It was a really good after war party. Uh, the after war con, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> You uh, talked to Sedona, who said that she believed her body was not at rest and asked that you take a look and try to repair that problem. Uh, she went off to try to find the temple in which her body was lain or disturbed uh, and hoped to return the next day. Meanwhile, the rest of you took some respite in with the Wintrips. Plenty of room and plenty of uh, food as they are used to lodging uh, workers during the summer times. The next day, rested and ready to go, but no sign yet of Sedona, you decided to start your investigation on your own, going out to the fields where the cattle had been grazing. There you looked around and found the evidence not only of the cattle, but also of the probable way they had been abducted, as the opposite side or the far side of the grazing fields are not visible if you're standing up on the near side of the uh, fields, giving an opportunity for a clever thief to make off with a few cattle. You also found evidence of a fence that had been uh, purposely broken. One of the pegs that had been used to hold the fence together was barely being held together and easily removed and then put back, which you may take of evidence of an uh, extended amount of crime. Anyway, having some direction and some idea, I believe you were going to set out in that direction. If anybody wants to ask or add anything. It says exhaustion with a sad face on my sheet. Did I pick up a level of exhaustion? Maybe like from having a shitty dream or something? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's still applicable. Curses. So yes, you did not get a restful sleep unlike the rest. Well, it feels too much like real life. <laughs> yeah, tell me about <laughs> it. Uh, fortunately, the storm that had been blowing the night before in the game has dissipated, so we won't have that particular real life element to also add more in. Although I look nervously at the graying clouds overhead and wonder if power could give out at any moment. For anybody just joining us who hasn't seen previous episodes, uh, it's been a trend that uh, Mark the Encaffeinated One, the DM, seems to be calling real life events before they happen. This is a very. If you want to know where to invest or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it used to happen on, on my uh, my radio show too, because I would be talking about new inventions and suddenly everybody would be talking about them. Yeah, it's disturbing. Well, we'll see. Uh, if now I want to get really inventive and have like millions of dollars for myself somehow up here so I can buy better streaming equipment. In any case, you've gathered by the edge of the forest. You have some indication that the cattle were pulled through here as there's some branches broken, some tramped grass, uh, and have a direction to travel. Are you heading off into the woods? Sure. Footsteps. Like, can we see any footsteps from anybody who would have taken cattle or like the, the, the animal's footsteps? <clears throat> well, your luck with finding footsteps was not so good. At some point, you were convinced the only kind of footsteps you're going to find were sideways footsteps. And the only footsteps you actually found were the imprints of cow patties, uh, right. unfortunately. Uh, but uh, with the the removal of the of, of this section of fence, it's easy to see that the ground beyond has been disturbed. With the rain that happened last night, though, it has smoothed over a little bit. So there's not heavy footprints to be found. So it's going to be a little bit of a trek through the woods. Um, you guys see where they went? <clears throat> I don't have your character sheets on hand, so if you do have your uh, own stats to keep track of. Mm -hmm. I don't have survival or anything, so not much of a tracker. Annie, you're muted? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So let's make straight-up perception rolls for each of you, then. All right, remember, Medrick, you're still 
you're still tired. So, or ooh, apparently also Andy is very tired. Oh, that twenty oh. would have been nice, but I guess I get a twelve. All right. So, so looks... uh, last time I, I was looking for tracks, and I, I was following my own tracks, and then there was a cow patty. So let's not do that. <laughs> Well, uh, then it leaves it up to Silas, who does uh, manage to find the remnants of where cattle had come through. And after about 10 minutes of wandering back and forth, kind of left and right across this area, uh, you start to realize that there's a, a couple of spaces where trees are far enough apart that it would have been easier to move things through there. And you make that leap of, of intuition moving through and find a place where, in fact, the the thick canopy over he, overhead uh, prevented the rain from washing away, and you find a couple of solid footprints. Looks like uh, two sets of, uh, of boot prints, and then the two sets of four hoof prints. So two cows and two people, and you head off in that particular direction. The light grows dimmer as you go deeper and deeper into the forest. Uh, you travel for about 15 minutes, meandering through, dodging stray branches. But the path gets wider and wider until you step upon some stone and realize that it's wide and flat. Uh, a flagstone is what it looks like. Uh, around it are several other crumbled fra flagstones. And it looks almost as though you found an old road, but... It has to have been ancient for the stone to be this disturbed. Large trees uh, are growing up all around the area. In fact, one, not as large, but large enough, about, um, I'd say about five inches around, has grown up in the middle of what would have been this road. Uh, the tracks are a little harder to see at this point, uh, but you suspect that the road is probably where they were actually following. Um, I point down to road. <laughs> yeah, I see it. For you, Silas, this is a little strange because um, the roads are well known. There's a very well traveled and very well maintained road that leads to the nearby uh, city of. Uh, where are we here? Mm, I had the name in front of me. I don't. But the nearby city, the King's Road, in fact, Pitajun, that's the nearby city. But the King's Road is, is very well maintained. This has some familiarity to the King's Road. It's not entirely differently made, just looks older and certainly not well maintained. It's like a hmm. road that shouldn't be here. Hey guys, this is a road that shouldn't be here. <laughs> okay. But, it, but it's here. Is it like abandoned or something? Maybe. I mean, I haven't heard of any old roads here, but um, I mean, I guess there must have been one. Now, what's your face? Sedona mentioned a temple. Maybe this leads to it. Yeah, could be the path to it. And uh, do we see anything like it? I'm assuming that the road is like straight. It, it looks like it was straight, but the edges are all frayed where stones have cracked and broken away. Some stones even look like they've been pulled away. Okay. So if our gaze follows the straight road, do we see anything ahead, or does the road just, like, end abruptly? It looks like it does curve and turn, so you can only see a certain distance ahead, about about 50 feet ahead. Um, yeah. And also there are some small trees which have sprung up in the midst of the road. You can even see where moss and grass have grown up over it. Uh, obscuring it in places, uh, giving it a, a, a strange green sheen. Um, but as you gaze on up ahead, you uh, two things kind of happen, not quite at the same time. First, um, there's the sound of rustling leaves as uh, a, a heavy breeze blows through the trees overhead, causing dappled light to spill everywhere. Um, and the, the the sound of the birds kind of stops for a second. Uh, and the ever-present sound only of insects seems to keep buzzing. And then up ahead, behind a tree, you see a small 
um, shape of, of misty white that seems to be uh, moving around tree to tree. After a second or two, you recognize a figure, uh, the short uh, humanoid uh, female figure of Sedona. Uh, she's sort of dashing back and forth around the trees, trying with unpracticed ease to hide as she moves, but not really having much success. I'll just call out to her. Hey, Sedona. Uh, she kind of vanishes behind a tree and then peeks outward, realizes who it is, and then comes rushing straight for you. Uh, it's a little bit unnerving because her form is semi-translucent. While she seems to step and walk, her feet never seem to quite synchronize with the ground. It's almost as though she's forgotten how properly to stay connected. She rushes up to you and sort of looks to grasp you on the shoulder and her hand passes partially through it. You feel somewhat chilled where she, where she touches you. She withdraws the hand quickly and, and grimaces, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. You're not shadowy and necromantic anymore. I feel... I feel thin. I feel like I'm fading somewhat. I perhaps you are passing on. But I I feel torn. Like part of me is staying here and part of me is moving on. I can't do anything about it. But I found the temple. Ooh, is is it along this road? Yes, quite some distance along. It looks old and broken. I wonder how long it's been abandoned. And there are people there. It shouldn't be here, so probably for a while. There are people there. I heard them. I didn't get too close. But probably the bandits. There are two cows tied up out front. Yeah, well, that confirms uh, your suspicions about some jackass stealing cows. <laughs> My leap tracking skills uh, let us find them. Um, please lead us to the temple. We'll see what we can do. Are there any uh, ambushes along the way that you saw? Well, I tried to keep myself hidden, but I saw some people just outside the door. They seem to be angrily arguing. I see. Good. Hopefully one stabs the other and it'll be less work for us. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yes. <laughs> Terribly convenient. And she gives you a kind of awkward look and then sort of slowly turns, follow me then. And starts to lead you further up the same path. Uh, after about, uh, it, it curves off to the left, and while it continues to curve off the left, she actually leads you more deeper into the forest. Uh, it's quite thick at this particular point, which she seems to not really register, as most of her moves smoothly right through the thick, th thick forest. The rest of you, however, are going to need to either uh, make some uh, athletics rolls or acrobatics rolls to move through and or possibly animal friendship or yeah let's do athletics. <laughs> plant friendship animal friendship now this would be to move through without making any noise 23 well that's pretty good uh, I am, to, i'm not stealthy so. <laughs> yeah well i rolled a 19 and an 8 so i guess the 8 plus 5 is going to be 13 13 I'll be doing great as if I was using the 19 and like stealthing and I'll hold a branch and it'll recoil and smack me back and smack me in the face. <laughs> so I'm quiet except for like the utterance of motherfucker. <laughs> so uh, describe to me who's going in what order and how this, how you're moving through this, this thick forest. Give if nobody words. stops me, I'm going first and I'm walking. Okay. So you've got Silas up first. Silas is not doing so well. Describe how that looks. I am pushing my way through the trees and branches. Okay, and they're snapping off pretty quickly here, left and right. 
Uh, fortunately, it kind of leaves an open opening for Annie to move through because uh, with Silas barreling on through and making all kinds of noise, it's a little hard to keep quiet, but at least uh, you don't, you're not breaking any trees. How is Medrick proceeding through? Just trying to follow Silas and probably catching a branch in the face. <laughs> or okay. several. I think Medrick is a bit taller than Annie, too. Oh, yeah. So probably all the trees that Annie manages to kind of duck a little bit to move out of the way of hit, hit Medrick pretty much smack in the face. Uh, which is... Or I'll, like, duck under a branch, but my helmet's going to catch onto it, and it's going to knock it on the floor, and it's going to go clink, 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 clink. <laughs> and then Annie is 5'9". Oh, okay. Yeah, no, she's, she's tall and nice, I, I pictured. Um, how tall is Medrick? Six foot six. Okay. Well, there's still... still <laughs> there's still, yeah. There's still quite a bit. And I think Saw, Silas was fairly tall, too, right? Tall and thin. No, no I'm five, five, six. Five, six. Oh, wow. So you're the shortest one of the bunch. I will get, uh -huh. all, that, I will get all that right eventually. No promises. Uh, as you move through the forest more and more, um, Silas out front you can start to hear uh, voices uh, arguing uh, sounds like a, uh, a deep baritone woman's voice and a very high pitched uh, whiny uh, male voice who seems to be apologizing and yet not uh, the woman's voice says, says something like and, and what possessed you to take cows we're not here for cows Porin said we had a job to do. It was a simple job in and out. Why the hell did you get cows? But they were there. We've done this before. It's easy. We have a way in, we have a way out, and nobody can ever know. Um, up ahead of you, Silas, you see that uh, Sedona has paused behind a tree and is kind of trying to form herself essentially behind a tree. Um, you kind of notice that maybe she's gaining a little more control over her shape, but she's actually much thinner than she should be. And with, with their shoulders and arms kind of wisping away almost to nothing, leaving just a, a column of, uh, of ghostly white air right behind this tree. Beyond, uh, the, uh, the trees, you can just make out dark gray stone um, with little little flecks catching in whenever the, the, the leaves overhead move once again, revealing a little bit of shafts of sunlight here and there. It's almost as though the, the, the stone has, has little lights that go off in it. Uh, looks to be a, a, a building, probably a story tall. You can see beside an opening uh, two uh, people standing, uh, a, a darker skinned woman on the right hand side, your right hand side of the door, and a uh, thin, weaselly looking uh, uh, man on the left hand side. Presumably, those match the voices. What I'm actually going to do is I will switch to the map um, so that we will have an opportunity so I can describe some things, but not everything. Um, I've got to remember how to do all of this stuff. All right. I forgot about the fact that goats are cows. Yes, I, I still, uh, in the last week or so, have not managed to, well, last month or so, have not managed to, to find uh, proper cows. I, I, I forgot to put that on my priority list. So, yes, we have, we have goat-like cows uh, instead. And I'm just going to put you guys roughly where you would have been. Um, I haven't had the time to draw my character either, so. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, and I need to add one more. So I need to go to... Uh, those of you watching alone or along at home, you're seeing my, my screen rather than the typical screen, screen so... I am not bothering with the double screens at the moment. Someday, all of this stuff will work properly and I won't have to worry about it. At least, at least it's stable enough that it's not doing anything at the moment. So I will be, gra I will gra be grateful for small things. 
So that's roughly where you are. Um, you're not exactly. Uh, can everybody see the roll twenty? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm trying. Oh, wait. To, I'm it's trying saying to scroll really. the wrong thing here. Um, I just hit refresh. Hopefully that fixes it. Hopefully. So, ahead of you, you can actually see uh, calmly eating grass and, and uh, small shoots uh, tied up at the base of a tree are indeed two rather, hmm, how would you describe it? I, I do, are any of you trained with animal handling? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, two cows. <laughs> you won't get much more detail than that unless you go closer. Uh, but they are firmly tied up against the tree. Um, you do, as you spy through the trees, see that the woman, uh, who is uh, slightly uh, uh, bulkier um, looking, uh, fairly dark skin, wearing a uh, bow which she has drawn, and is looking over generally in your direction. Um, the other one, the the uh, human, seems to be still pleading his case, uh, going on and on about uh, how you know cows are good money, and you know a, a one a cow here and there will it won't bother anybody, but it makes me and my brother uh, have everything we need for a while. Shut up! The other one kind of whispers, shouts to the other. I heard something over there. He's going to be scanning in your direction. What do you do? I'm just going to not move. Make a, um, make a perception check, Medric. I'm trying to. The roll 20 is just freaking out on me right now. <laughs> perception. Maybe, let, maybe, maybe it's going to let me roll. So, 11. <laughs> okay. There's something familiar about that woman's voice, but you can't quite place it. I just restarted my roll 20, and it's not working. It just says, like, loading, mapping dungeons, hatching dragons, reading core rule book. Oh, yeah. That's the kind of loop that I found myself in before. Uh, you may just need to reload the page. Not just re reload, but actually go to the address bar and type in roll20.net and start over. Um, I don't know if it's a load issue on their side or not. Um, I would like to try to back up and hide better behind a tree. Okay. Make a stealth check. Oh, your stealth check is hidden from me. Oh. <laughs> from what they're... All I saw was stealth and no number. It was really quite amazing. It's because I... I am a nerd who is actually rolling the like dice, the three nope. D dice. That's awesome. I wish, I wish I could see the three D dice. So I'm going to move you. Uh, well, I can't really move you off of the map because there's no extra space off the map. Uh, yeah. But you find yourself. Uh, let's see. Kind of over here, uh, and surely the cows provide you with enough cover. Surely. Any luck, uh, Medric? I was thinking of actually being moved there, if that's possible. I just log out and log back in and reopen the tab. Hopefully that works. Um, the roll was only nine, though, so oh. it's not a strategically great position. Um, yeah, she could still be there. She'd just be seen. It, it keeps putting into the... Like, it's like app.roll20.net.net like slash editor. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be editing nope. anything. <laughs> that That's what you end up with. That's for whatever reason, that's the URL. Okay. It's Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Unless, hmm. hold on, let me try a thing. Um, I can move your icon on the uh, page and you can just um, roll dice if you want. And I'll put anywhere she wanted to be in line with the cows. How about uh, Silas? What's your approach? 
I'm just going to watch them for a while. I'm not certain exactly what's going on, and I have no experience with this, so. Okay. They'll just uh, try to hide behind a tree, but probably not, and. Uh, okay, make a stealth roll. Okay. He moves a little under the tree, and yeah, it's probably still not great. Okay. Uh, just trying to bring up D20 myself. Or roll up uh, D&D Beyond. That's what I'm trying to do. And I forgot to bring up someone's stats. There we go. Yeah, I use a different browser, so now it works. But uh, now is my fan like way too loud? <laughs> Doesn't I can't hear it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nobody can hear it. I'll keep it this way. If it gets loud, just let me know, and I'll mute my my microphone. Okay. Uh, you see, Sedona carefully move up right behind one of the cows. Uh, her form shifts once again, and her arms reappear, uh, and she's kind of halfway in through one of the cow, uh, cows at the moment. The cow seems to be disturbed by this and is starting to moo and stomp its feet, dragging a bit more attention to her than she probably meant. Uh, what is Medric up to? I'll just kind of stay put because I know that whenever I move, noise follows. <laughs> okay. But I'll observe the uh, two arguing and hope that they go back to arguing. All right, you hear the woman once again speak. Go get your brother. I think there's trouble. And the other one uh, whines for a second, uh, but then uh, from another glare, very quick glare from the woman, uh, runs back inside. You can hear him calling out for others. Who's there? She calls out in your direction. I'm going to ready and load my crossbow. Okay. So There's you... nobody there. Like, I'm just not, not, not going to make a sound. Okay. Yeah, I, I bite my tongue too. All right. I'm kind of hoping Sedona is going to, like, spook one of the cows and it's going to be, oh, it's just a cow. Never mind. They're just going to go, go back inside. You see uh, the woman hold up the, uh, hold up her bow, arrow notched. You better speak, or it's going to get much worse for you. And then Sedona moves forward. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and kind of charges forward towards her. The arrow is loosed. This should be funny. It'd be funny if I typed it properly, too. As the arrow hits square through uh, Sedona and tearing a small patch of white through her, uh, the arrow flies on towards the uh, cow, which, uh, uh, disturbed already, uh, gets a little bit more uh, disturbed and, yeah, starts to moo loudly. Um, Sedona kind of keeps moving, <laughs> not really sure of her own uh, effect. And then I'm just kind of moving th right through the woman. Are you going to do anything? Uh, What's her reaction? You can't see from where you are. Okay. Crap. What do I see? I'm peeking around the tree at her. Uh, make an insight check. Ten. Uh, she's... How would I put this? She's not as disturbed as you might think, having had a ghost pass right through her. Um, but she's definitely uh, getting ready another arrow and then shouting. She looks more annoyed and angry than anything else. Is she looking where Sedona went, or is she looking out at us? She has turned towards the building, yes. Uh... 
shouts are starting to come up from inside. Well, I don't remember what all my spells were. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, actually, I'll drop the crossbow. And uh, I'll just step out from behind the two with the crossbow uh, pointed at her and tell her to put the weapon down. I'll like, move over here. Okay. Make an intimidation roll. Eight. Oh, can't type. Uh, yeah. yeah, she uh, she hears you, spins and fires her bow. She already fi uh, okay fires again, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Although she well, she did fire it at Sedona. Yep, and immediately drew another arrow. Okay, are we in combat or? Uh, this essentially is you try to surprise round, it failed, so they get a reaction. Because she was holding her bow for another shot. Sure. So that is a 19 to hit. Pretty sure that hits. And yep. I need to bring up. Okay. Oops, it's not a d20 damage. That's that's not the right thing. There you go. Uh, seven points of damage as the as the arrow uh, slices into your shoulder, kind of embedding itself there. Uh, now we will roll initiative, and I'm not going to be using the initiative tracker because that just causes more problems. Um, is initiative a disadvantage because I'm exhausted, or is it just skill checks? Uh, it is considered a skill check. Yes, because it does get the bonuses from it. So yes, you'd still be a disadvantage. So we have 19 from Annie. Oh, that 20 would have been nice. Uh, did you roll three times? I only clicked it twice, but maybe it registered three times, but mm -hmm. this... The last two are like the same thing. So, what's your uh, your dex bonus? Oh, uh, I believe it's zero. Yep, it's zero. Okay. And Silas got twelve. All right. I've just got to work out. Uh... I'm just gonna run off and grab my sheet quickly. Okay. All right. Someday I will get better at noting all that down. All right. You hear the shot go off, Annie, and you are the first to move. You can't really uh, see uh, Silas from where you are, but you have a a vague idea where the woman is on beyond the cows. I am going to move here. Okay. Uh, is is this a tree or is this a bush? It is a tree. That is a tree. Okay. So from here, should I be able to see her? Uh, yes. Yep. There's cool. an agitated cow between you and her, but otherwise nothing really obscuring to your view. Cool. I shoot her with my short bow. Okay. Uh, roll a two. <laughs> Unfortunately, the arrow goes clattering on and hits the, the uh, wall behind. You can see that when it hits the wall, there is a little bit of stone that gets pulled off the wall. Like it's really old, dry stone. And a little flash of light as well. Uh, uh, and I say, you've got this, Silas. And <laughs> go back behind the tree. <laughs> okay. You can use a bonus action to hide. 
Uh, no, I use my bonus action to give Silas uh, oh, right. advantage. Okay, so Silas, you have advantage on your next. Uh, is that attack or saving throw or? Uh, your... You can use a help action on your bonus action. Uh, when you use the help action yeah. to aid, it's from 30 feet. Yeah, it'd be, it would be an attack or a skill check. Okay, That's, yeah, okay. Uh, it is from within. Okay. I should have opened all of these pages. Um, pardon me. I should have opened all of these pages before I started. I knew there was something I forgot to do. It's been a month, folks. <laughs> Has it ever been a month? It's been two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but it feels like a month. <laughs> it's been two weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's been a year, folks, <laughs> since we last. Uh, okay. Does not feel like it's been a week since my birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. We got you a thunderstorm and everything. Happen, who knows? I, I, I just realized that when I go back to work, I'll be able to uh, tell people, hey, it feels like I haven't seen you since winter. <laughs> <laughs> we have reached that point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a bit of a glow from the uh, the destroyed open doors, and you see a little bit of of uh of lightning sort of streak out the door uh, let's see and, uh, sorry i need to figure something out that i math seems to be really hard at the moment all right are you pulling your blanket away from me that makes it silas's turn um yeah I know what I'll do um okay Silas they take an action uh Silas now looks um Ghostly in the same way that Sedona does. Uh, like he actually, he looks a little ghosty, but a little zombie too. Uh, <laughs> and drops the uh, the uh, crossbow uh, and uh, I'm attempting to performance uh, a role of... Uh, You have uh, you have desecrated the temple. The dead are rising. <laughs> okay. Oh, <God. laughs> um, all right. That's uh. Yeah. All right. Got a twenty-two performance. <laughs> okay. I don't think she can actually roll that high. Let's see. Uh, no, she cannot. Uh, as you see her her face go slack and her eyes grow wide uh, as she seems to uh, be very much buying into this performance. Also, there's an arrow sticking out of me and at least the, the illusion of me doesn't look like it's affected by it. <laughs> uh, you see her kind of, uh, 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 like I said, kind of her eyes go wide, her expression grows slack and concerned uh and she's looks like she's about to say something but no, no voice comes out at the moment okay has uh, action uh Ooh. <laughs> is he moving right up to her um i'll move closer to her not quite uh yeah i'll move like up there so Okay. Just slowly, sort of staggering forward. 
Fair enough. Right. That ends your turn? Yep. Medrick, you're up. Yep. I'm just looking at... Oh, actually, no, it's her turn. Ha ha. Okay. So you have a moment to uh, two more. So, yeah, I know what she's going to do, which is back away. Fire an arrow as she's backing away. But it is a disadvantage, although an 18. Yep, that's still hit. For five points of piercing damage as the arrow kind of hits its mark, more or less center mass, right in the, right in the, right in the sternum kind of thing, which, you know, does give the illusion a little bit of pause when a little bit of red comes out. But she doesn't seem to notice as she continues to nope. back up inside. Uh, the illusion's covering it. There's no red from the illusion. Is there a concentration roll? Um, I imagine so. <laughs> if it's a maintained spell, usually uh, there is. Yeah, I think this is the constitution save. Hey! Yeah, no problem. Uh, so the arrow, yeah, kind of disappears into the ghastly form of you, and you try your best not to grimace. Uh, she backs up in. We've got trouble! I told you this was bad news. I told you this was a bad idea. And she kind of vanishes inside. Now it is uh, Medric's turn. Actually, Medric, make a perception check. This one is hearing-based, if that matters for you. All right. Am I on the right window? Oh, so many windows. Perception. Does hearing-based mean I don't have exhaustion anymore? <laughs> no, some characters have bonuses to hearing. I don't know. I don't think yours does, but I thought I'd mention no. it just in case. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Both sides of the spectrum. It's like whenever I roll 20s, I'm always at disadvantage. <laughs> there, you, you, there's something familiar, but at the same time, you're like, my friend just turned into a ghost. Well, he's pretty sure he's still my friend, and he's... He's <laughs> still a ghost. Is he a ghost? Well, soon to be. Um, <laughs> pretty close to it, actually. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. All right. I'll go up. Psst, Silas, you okay? No. <laughs> All right, well, then let's cast a level two cure wounds. <laughs> so you're going to move right up to him? Hmm? You're going to move right up to him then? Yeah. Okay. I just forget if cure wounds is... What the hell? Computer, don't. <laughs> cure wounds is, is touch. Yeah, it's touch range, D8... Uh... Display driver stopped responding and has recovered. Okay. <laughs> Everything just went black all of a sudden, and it's like, oh. Well, we can still see you, at least. Good. Let me find the right window again. This computer is just garbage. <laughs> oh, you moved me? Okay, cool. Yeah, I moved you. All right. I wasn't sure if you could see the... Uh... Or if you could... For a while, I couldn't. See well funny. <laughs> D8 plus modifier, which is... Eight. So Silas gains this much HP back. And I take... Ooh. I was hey. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we modified it to a D4 rather than D6. Okay. So 2D4 plus 2D4 and resistance. So I take three. Wasn't it just a D4 plus the level? It's a D4 per level. Ah. Yeah. I think. Unless we change that too, but I don't think so. <laughs> Trying out some new stuff, folks. A very strange god. So 21 HP. Right, well, and then I'll move behind the tree again because I'm assuming this person shooting at us hasn't seen me because she's inside. It's true. And you haven't seen her either because she went inside. How much movement do I have left? I forget where I, where I was. Uh, you were here, I believe. So 5, 10, 15 is what you've used so far. 1, 2. That's not you. Yeah. 
You yeah. should be able to move back. Uh... I'll just go here. Okay. You've got kind of partial cover behind the tree there. Yeah. All right. That was Medric. Now four. Did I just get the number? Oh, okay, there we go. So inside. Uh, right there. I'll just roll real dice for myself for some of these because it's easier than trying to type for things that are purely internal. All right. Uh, the, 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 the. Wait, did I get a bonus action? Or do I have a bonus action? Uh, everybody has a bonus action if you have something to do with it. Spiritual Oof. weapon! Oof! Um, you, you cast a spell already. Oh, yeah. right. Crap, yeah. okay. Yeah, trust me. I know that one a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, see if I have a spiritual weapon icon. I don't think I have one, so I will draw something for that. Okay, he hasn't cast it yet. Yeah, yeah, I can't cast it because I already cast but, a spell. I forgot. But I consider that to be a warning <laughs> for me to get it ready. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. That, uh, da, 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 da. I believe we are at the end of the round. Top of the round. Annie, you're up. Hello. Um. So if I move, um, with thirty feet, I can move here. Okay. Um, and I can see her. Yep, you can just make her out through the edge of the uh, the doors. Yep. There's d large double doors that have long been bashed in. You can see rubble around the edges of the ground. Uh, she's in full sight on my screen. So. Yep, yep. Cool. Uh, I will, once again, try with my third bow. Roll another five. Oh no. As the arrow goes flying in, bouncing off the inside walls. Uh and that's all my movement. Um what can I do with my bonus actions? Um Yeah, that's all. You could sprint. Uh oh yeah. I can do that. Uh I'm a dash and Go back behind this tree. Okay. So run out. Run back. All right. Inside. More lightning comes streaking kind of out the door. Okay. There's that one. Um, and Silas, you would see, first of all, someone running out through the door. Uh, it's the fellow who was standing beside the door before. Yep. And seems to be uh, running outward. Actually, runs out to here, sees you. <laughs> Goes, I've always wanted to kill a zombie and jumps on me. He's like, ah! <laughs> uh, he's not quite that. I will be right back. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, looks at you, there's a shocked expression on his face, and then he looks uh, looks straight at you uh, with a puzzled expression. Um, make a wisdom saving throw. Da, da, da. 23. Okay. Yeah. The gaze seems to pierce into you, but passes through you. Um, he doesn't look surprised, kind of looks like he expected that to happen. Uh, and then continues moving on uh, to get a... Yeah, you're between him and his 
cows, but unfortunately, it's about all they can really do. Uh, let's see. Uh, inside. That puts it at his turn. And there we go. Um, you hear from within uh, that same woman call out, There's another one outside. This place is infested. I'm out of here. And then it is Silas's turn. Hmm. Uh... I am so not used. Okay. Uh, I am going to cast quadruplication, and there's now three more of Silas uh, there. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> all right, we're just going to put an icon on you. Uh, that's fine. I think they, they're all kind of within my space. They're just shifting around. So. Yep. It's just something to remind me that that's happening. Um. I know there's a bunch of icons I can load into Roll Twenty Two to ha cover all these situations. Let's just do that one. So your little, little, extra guy. Um, <laughs> and then is that a concentration spell? I don't think it is. No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, where is? Oh, I gotta find my spell sheet. Um. Yeah, then I'm going to go. Okay. And then back. Yeah, as soon as you get to the door. <laughs> Holy, crap. Holy crap, there's more uh, people there. <laughs> yeah, when I get to the door. So when you get to the door, first off, you see that uh, Sedona has not moved very much. In fact, seems to be not moving at all. There are several shreds and tears at her form. Uh, it looks as though uh, uh, magic has been shredding her and she does not seem to move. Beyond her, you see someone who seems to be casting spells. Looks like a half-elf of some kind. Looks uh, uh, confident, unperturbed, and a little bit angry. Uh, just over his shoulder, you can see charging forward a half-orc woman. And that's all you can really see from there. Oh, beyond them is a, is a looks like a, a fountain in the center of the room. Cool. Uh, and I can kind of see uh, the guard woman from the front off on the edge. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, and, okay. Yeah, she's yeah, just around the corner. I move back. Uh, and I can almost actually, I mean, technically I see someone there on the screen, but I probably didn't notice them. You probably do see someone moving around the corner coming down that way. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I just go, uh, there's four of them. One of them's a caster. And there's a half orc coming our way. She looks angry. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's all I've got. I don't think I have any useful bonus actions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, actually, no, I will uh, enchant my staff. No, I cast a spell. Never mind. I don't do anything. Okay. And Is that a bonus action? Because I thought you could do a bonus action or a cantrip spell. Uh, as long as it... Oh, yeah, it is a cantrip. Okay. Yeah, so I cast that. Uh, I cast a shillelagh on my staff. Okay. Um, the first illusion spell that you cast? Uh, the... Uh... The very first one was the uh, self. Uh, oh crap! What's it called? Uh, disguise self. Okay. Oh, actually, that probably gets dropped by the. Uh, the other one was mirror image. Yeah. No, that one I've checked. I've used that one before. Yeah. Uh, disguise. So yeah, self he now looks is... like silent again. No, nope, disguise self is not concentration. Oh, neat. I, uh, I wanted to so check yeah. that because there's a balance of those that I keep forgetting. We'll figure it all out. We'll get the rhythm. Um, yeah. Okay. And your staff is now uh, glowing slightly with a bit of energy. 
Probably in keeping with the illusion of slightly ghostly energy. That works. Uh, okay, that is your turn. Okay. And... Uh, actually, not quite up to the door, but uh, then attempting to strike. You hear a battle cry from within. Unfortunately, it seems to uh, swing wide, and you hear that you hear a swear following it slightly afterwards. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Medric needs to go. All right. I will cast Shield of Faith on myself. Do I take one or two? Sorry, what now? Take the, I think for the fire damage. Have... Yeah. Do I round it up or down? Uh, yeah. Round it down. Okay. So 20 HP. Where's my pencil? I need like an actual desk for this. So now I got plus two AC and with the shield. Anyway, I'll move forward because I guess shit's, shit's about to hit the fan. One, two. And I will wait. So I got a shield out and a Warhammer in hand and shield of faith. All right. Just trying to find a better way to do all of this midstream, which is silly. Why am I trying to invent things now? <laughs> what am I doing? Who am I? What is this going on there? Okay. Who actually knows? Who actually? <laughs> As if there weren't enough things to uh, to juggle <laughs> uh, to begin with. All right. Hey, hi, everybody. All right. Uh, from in front of you, you can see Sedona's form, ragged and torn, trying to twist, not moving at all. It seems like she's taking the full brunt of this. Uh, let's see. And from down the hallway... Hmm. Okay. Okay. I will roll. I'm just rolling my stuff with the with dice because I don't have character sheets to roll from. Uh, that is a twenty-four to hit Medric. God damn it! Yeah, that's a hit. Um, as an arrow flies from out of the darkness of the inside of the door from someone you didn't see coming, that is a six points of piercing damage. And of course, the shield of faith goes down. Where is my pencil? So yes, as this arrow flies outward, it kind of nicks you right on the side of the head, doing this nasty scratching damage from right beside your eye, up the side of your face, and it causes you to kind of blink and twist and unfortunately lose the uh, connection to the spell. Um, for you standing right beside him, Sil Silas, you can actually see where the trace was. There's a little bit of flame which fires up around the edge of the, of the, uh, of the head of Medric. And okay. that's an odd, odd, you would not have expected something like that to have occurred. And we will move back. Uh, Annie, you're up. Hello. I suspects the flaming orcs. Hello. <laughs> I have not been having good luck with uh, the, the hits that I've been trying to do. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go here. Here. That's 
three. Uh, I am going to try to shoot flip here. Okay. You can also make out this uh, rather angry uh, uh, buff half work from inside the door at that point, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, seven. Let me check here. That hits. Oh, I hit a thing. Uh, yeah. Oh. And yeah, sneak okay. attack. Actually, or no. Sorry, it, doesn't was, have... it was 11. I was thinking it was 11 before the bonuses, but it's not. It's 11 total. Sorry, that misses. Okay, cool. Uh, you, for a moment there, you think you hit, and then you notice that the way that uh, the the fellow kind of turned, it caught and tore a hole into his jacket, and then the arrow flies on by. Cool. My stuff does the math for me, so the, the number I say is the number. Fair enough. <laughs> I will try to pay attention. It's too many things. Yes. Uh, and uh, I give Medric advantage, or actually. And you can also yeah. see Sedona caught in the doorway, kind of unmoving and being torn to pieces. I, you know, I'm going to go here. Okay. Uh, you can yeah. also see the mage is casting things beyond him. And just barely yeah. make out the woman around the corner. Yup. I can see these two, and then I have the forehead of this guy, and the chin of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, that is their turn. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you see the uh, the uh, caster beyond this half elf, who's dressed in a in a in dark but uh, tight formed robes. They're not the the billy flowing robes. They look like they're they're made for traveling. Uh, and he kind of smirks and quirks his his eye up, and then sort of lets loose with both hands. And you see several small darts fly out towards you and towards uh, Sedona. Let's see at that level it is da, 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 okay uh, one of them is going towards Sedona two of them are going towards you Ooh. as two magic missiles collide with you for two points and one point of damage and then the larger one seems to collide with Sedona once so again three points. so three points total for you and uh, you notice that for Sedona, though, um, large sections of her body, where she had been able to kind of manipulate slightly her form before, it's almost as though all of that is being stopped, and now larger holes are forming in her being. You can see right beside her, the uh, the angry uh, half orc woman wielding a large mace is is lining up. Yup. But first. Um, Let's see. Uh, although easily intimidated, I think the fellow that you shot at hmm, is going to turn towards you, kind of hold up his coat with the hole in it. You shot at me. Why did you shoot at me? Um, and is going to, oh, what does he want to do? I think you shot my friend. Uh, he's actually going to run over towards the cow <laughs> uh, and starts to uh, starts to unravel the cord around the cow's neck. The cow is not happy. Uh, oh, but he manages to to avoid being hit by the cow uh, as he manages to untie one of them. Uh, looks like that's what he's he's going to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, inside, you hear the woman's voice once more. Screw this! I'm not being paid enough for this, and starts taking off somewhere you can't see. Do I recognize the voice now? Uh, actually, at this point, 
after several examples of it, yes. Um, there was a very competent scout that you worked with called Baneer. Uh, you didn't expect to see her here, but she was one of the people that was on the boat with you. Yeah. Um, she's very well known for being very eagle-eyed and following through. The fact that she's retreating is somewhat unusual. But you served with her, and you remember how she had spotted ambushes long before anybody else. For you. Benir, B-E-N-Y-R. Okay. Uh, let's see. So she's pieced out. Silas. Uh... Well, hmm. I am going to come over here. Uh, yeah, I am going to uh oh no it's a concentration spell wait i think we checked before actually nothing i've got up is a concentration spell because i don't think that's correct yeah i don't think shillelagh is um nope. so yeah i am going to harpoon the psyche of uh Porin there uh, i am mind spiking him okay uh, what is the save? Uh, let's see. Not very high. Thirteen. Uh, it's a, a shoot. I gotta get the spell out. Uh, it should, I imagine, be wisdom though. Okay. Well, I can start by rolling. I got a natural eighteen on the die. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see him kind of, uh, you see one eyebrow kind of rise as the, the, the mental contact is made and you feel this, this tug of wills for a moment and then his, his face grows wider with a smile as you feel yourself pushed back. Uh, yeah, I see what the effect on a uh, failure is. Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> scroll too far. Uh, mind spike. Half as much damage. Okay, successful. yeah, so half still damage. Takes damage actually. So that is. Duh. Wow! Holy oh. crap! So uh, eight points of psychic damage after the having. Wow. Okay. Well, he's not. He's grimacing a lot more painfully now. <laughs> And I say, kill them all, my minions. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm just going to uh, stand there blocking the door, I guess. Okay. And your ethereal you wispy self. Anyways, if he wants to. Uh, so yeah, that's... Hmm. Yeah, I don't have anything else I can do, so that's that. Okay. Um, the half-orc right in front of you mm -hmm. uh, sees you step in and kind of smiles. You get the impression almost like, hey, more of them, and steps up to you. You can take a swing at you and a swing at uh, Sedona. Uh, no problem hitting Sedona. Uh, however, uh, I believe misses you. It's a 10 to hit. Mm, yep, that's a miss. Mm. Not by a lot, but it's a miss. Unfortunately, it takes another large wisp out of Sedona, almost backhanding her. Uh, and will stand her ground. Uh, this one's a tough one. Let's see. Medric, you're up. All right. 
It's a double movement to move through allies, right? Nope. Uh, you okay. can move through an ally's square without a problem. You can also move through Sedona Square because she doesn't really present any physical restriction. So I'll go here and smack the other half orc with the Warhammer. Okay. Let me find my This dice. close, you also recognize this. This is Arniv. Known for being a bit of a rogue element in the, in the troop you were in. Uh, a very competent fighter, but not uh, particularly good at following orders. So now you've seen two of the people you actually used to work with. Arnie, okay, just a sec. Mm. Trying to find my proficiency bonus. <laughs> so it's only proficiency bonus that goes on hitting, right? Uh, your strength, if it's a strength-based weapon, or dexterity right. if it's dexterity-based. So five total. Call it a warning shot. So that is that hit? Oh, <laughs> uh, that hits, definitely. 28 plus through strength. So there's six damage worth of warning shot. It's like, Arnie, what are you doing? And as a bonus action, I will then call forth the spiritual weapon next to the caster. Do I recognize him, by the way? You do not recognize the caster. Okay. And let's see. What do well, I there's do? a spiritual weapon next to him right now, and I can it attack on the same turn? Uh, uh, if you've ca if you've just cast it, then yeah. Wow. Okay. So cool. We're gonna use that as the spiritual weapon. I see if you can. I should be able to give you control over it, so you can move it as necessary. Uh... Controlled by underneath. That's the one. Thank you. Than setting up a game for someone else, so. <laughs> so you should be able to move that where you need it to be. Well, it's right next. It's right next to him, so that's gonna make an attack roll. Okay. Nice. Is that hit? Uh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong screen. Uh, oh yeah, that hits. Oh. Ouch. So that's also going to be a warning swing. It's like, stop, everybody. Okay. That was closer than I, I liked. As you see him kind of kind of flinch a little bit. Excuse me. Uh, okay. That is your turn. Yep. Who? Oh. You see Sedona's form start to shift and coalesce. It it seems starts to fill in some of the, the gaps and holes, and she becomes more animate. Uh, she has a look on her face which um, all three of you can kind of see because you're this close. It is almost terrifying because while she had a, a somewhat pleasant girl's face before and was recognizable and could be the while a shadow of the living person she had been before, now it takes on a visage of pure rage and pure inhuman anger. Uh, and she kind of rouses herself and seems to be set into battle, if you will. But that was her turn uh, from within. Hmm. I've got your back as the other one up the hallway comes up and joins Arniv in the battle. I'm going to be taking a swing. Yeah. Pulls out a wicked looking uh, uh, curved blade and takes a swing at Medric. Sure. Because you're right there. Uh, at 20... That would be a hit. 22, yeah. <laughs> 22 to hit. Uh, as the, the uh, blade slashes across you, it only does three points of slashing damage. That's good. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, but seems to be smiling 
and eager and ready, even though this is another one almost, in fact, you probably would say the twin of the one you'd seen outside, uh, somewhat smaller and diminutive, uh, somewhat uh, 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 higher pitched voice when he spoke, uh, but he's got a, a, a downturned face, so his eyes are a little bit more uh, uh, sly looking, and he's almost smiling at the prospect. Uh, let's see. That is him. Back around to Annie. Hello. Um, did Arneve react to Medric talking to her? She didn't seem to react. Uh, make an insight check. Nine. Nine. She seems entirely focused on fighting at the moment. Cool. Uh, then I will attack her with my rapier. Yes, double digits. Yay. <laughs> that hits. Uh, sneaky, sneaky duck. Yeah. That is five from the rapier and ooh, 10 from the sneaky duck. 15. Okay. Um, as you kind of dive in, uh, as she's momentarily distracted, both by being surrounded by enemies, even her own ally coming up beside her, she doesn't exactly register in the way you might expect an ally to, uh, kind of acknowledging that that person isn't attacking at the same time, but not exactly, there wasn't a friendly look. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the rapier kind of snakes in and around her large uh, mace. Uh, and stabs her just just kind of uh, beneath the arm, just around the ribs. And you can feel a nice solid hit go in. And she kind of flinches and looks over at you. A uh, little flecks of white f uh, foam around her mouth. Doesn't seem to be in, as distracted as you expected her to be from being stabbed in the side. Uh, that was Annie. Uh, and then I am going to... Uh, hmm. I will give uh, Medric advantage on his next, next attack. I will give him the help action. Okay. Uh, let's see. From within, the mage that you've been engaged with, uh, and uh, uh, Silas, and the one who has been holding Sedona uh, still, for the first time seems to be somewhat uncertain. Uh, and then kind of growls and says in an, in an even tone, Fine then, if it is to be a battle of masters, then I call upon my master. Send me aid. Bring me victory. And you see him kind of uh, lean back and shout and, and laugh. Uh, and there is a sound like the tearing of, uh, of cloth a long shredding sound of ripping and and uh, uh, of tearing and of, of kind of soft, wet flesh almost breaking. Uh, as behind all of you, in the clearing behind, appears a being that, in that rip that you can see now behind you, tentacles reach outward and it moves into this reality it is uh fighting me as far as going to the right screen you need right. to right click it there we go nope <laughs> there we go to token layer as you see this strange triangular form emerge out of nothingness behind it the the term reality seals like uh like a wound slowly oozing back and forth and it lets forth a a a cry and howl of unnatural form. And that was his turn. It doesn't go for a one. Oh. <coughs> okay, that was his. I forgot to put it in my notes. There we go. Uh, all right, from outside. Uh, Flip has now untied both of the cows. Back inside. Uh, the one, okay, she's gone. Do, do, do. Silas. Yes. You now sense a creature behind you that sort of popped into existence. I turn around. The illusion does def definitely does not go, yeah! <laughs> it, 
It is horrifying to behold. Do I got to make a fear check? I'm just checking that now. I don't think so. I forgot to bring up that sheet. All right. In any case, uh, it is a disturbing sight to behold. Uh, nope, you do not. It's frightening, but not be uh, not uh, debilitatingly frightening. Not to make a roll frightening. <laughs> yeah. As you see, what looks to be a, a a pillar of of stone and flesh with a large eye and large maw and large tentacles reaching out in all directions, focused and intent on you. But you get attacked first. Well. Yes. I do say, um, Annie, I think we're in trouble here. Um, yeah. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? <laughs> that had to have been said at least once. I actually thought about that earlier today. <laughs> hey, I didn't start. I didn't start singing my Sedona. So. <laughs> Ah, uh, well. Yeah. Oh, okay. I will. Where is that? Yeah. Um, I turn back towards uh, uh, Flax and uh, the one I can't read because my life bar is in the way, but the, the half work. Arnie. Yeah. And, uh, I am going to, I am going to dread gaze at them. Oh dear. Cause fear, mm. which I believe is a pair of wisdom checks. I'm casting it at uh, level two, so it affects both of them. Uh, and difficulty is only thirteen, though. Okay. Arneve does not succeed. Neither does Flax. So the two of them, uh, what is the effect? Uh, just checking. There we go. Uh, this is a concentration spell, just so you know. Wisdom uh, Shemito or become frightened of me until the spell ends. They can repeat the save <clears throat> of each of their turns, uh, ending the effect on a success. Okay. So for now... Uh, they just can't get any closer to me and have a disadvantage. Uh... Okay, they are frightened. Yeah, they get disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while I am within line of sight. Okay. Neat. Um... Uh, it's tentacles. Do they look like they can reach me from here? Uh, they look to be disturbingly long and, uh, and, uh, grasping. Yes. They are moving in your direction, in fact. Yeah. Well, then I will move a little closer and hold my staff at the ready. Doesn't actually do anything, but uh, that's, I'm all out of actions. Okay, it's turn. Let's see. How discriminant is it? Not much. All right. Uh, as it will whip out tentacles, uh, it's going to attack. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Yep. So first, uh, reaching out towards uh, Silas, I believe. Well, that's a 13. Oh, yeah, 13. Uh, it, uh, yeah, no, it hits. As the tentacle wraps around you. Well, however, I have a mirror image up. I'm just checking oh, yeah. who gets to roll. You do. So you okay, get... so I roll a d20, and on a six or higher, he hits in a mirror. 
Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you are indeed uh, wrapped up in the tendril. Second one going towards Annie. That is an 18 to hit. Uh, for Annie? Yep. Yep. Okay. For Annie. Uh, third one going towards Sedona. It reaches out and would have grabbed her, but it passes right through her. And the fourth one uh, reaches out towards Arnive, but unfortunately, uh, she kind of bats it away with the, well, I mean, unfortunate for, for you guys, maybe, but uh, she bats away the, the incoming tentacle with, a, uh, with her mace. Then she drags Annie straight towards the creature. Uh, and then we'll attempt to bite. Really? I think that... Okay, good. It has advantage because that was really bad. That was the same. Does a nine hit Annie? No. No. As it kind of tries to reel you in and stuff you into its mouth, its very large, large mouth. This creature who stands about seven feet tall... At its weird domey peak, its mouth is about two feet wide. And it just tried to stuff you in its gullet. Unfortunately, even with its bonus, I can't help rolling a two twice. Uh, that's I mean, I've been rolling single digits all night, so like... <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, that is its go. Uh, Arnive. Arnive turns around, and you can see uh, Medric, uh, mm -hmm. the, the foaming mouth, the familiar look. She's barely recognizing anything in reality. All she's seeing is people that she uh, sees as targets, and she sees you as that right now. Um, you sparred against Arnive. Arnive is very strong, uh, but once entirely focused, has a hard time changing directions. But you know that the commander was able to order her to stop. It just took more than one attempt, usually. Uh, however, I don't think a 10 hits you. No. And she swings with the mace once and misses, and a 13? Nope. Both you need times. To know. Nice. Both times, uh, the, the mace comes swinging down at you. Uh, second time, bouncing off your shield. Uh, your arm kind of buckles a little bit behind the strength that's involved, but uh, you're able to hold on pretty strongly. Uh, let's see. Medric, it is your turn. Okay. If you can cast Fireball, this would be a good time. <laughs> it's third level spell, and I don't have it yet. <laughs> Although. Huh. No. Where is my sheet? Oh, one thing that you should take note of, Pat. Mm -hmm. Mind spike is actually an ongoing spell, and it's concentration. Yep, but that's only for the tracking person. Yeah, which didn't take effect, so. I just dropped it after. Okay. But yeah, if I actually had succeeded on it, then uh, I'd have to keep that one. Right. I'll tell Ernie if we have bigger problems right now. And I will. Oh, wrong window. Wrong window again. Right, different browser. I had to do that. Yeah. I will go smack this dude, hoping that I was kind of able to convince Arnie that she shouldn't attack me. I don't know if it actually did. Uh, make a persuasion check. And that's a disadvantage again. Well, there's a six, so I don't think that's going to work. Uh, unfortunately, just out of instinct, she she reacts. Uh, and certainly the one beside her doesn't uh, really care about you, as the little guy, reedy guy doesn't care. Uh, an 18 to hit, though, misses, I believe. 
Whew, just barely, yeah. <laughs> uh, as the other one uh, uh, kind of snirks at your, your trying to convince her of anything. Uh, however, he's also still frightened, actually. Is that frightened uh, uh, disadvantage to all attacks or only ones after you? Uh, it's all attacks and skill checks, I believe. Okay. Uh, but only while I'm in his line of sight. Oh, and you moved out of his line of sight. Okay. Somewhat, yeah. Uh, an 18 still doesn't hit you, though. Medric. No. All right. It's a nine. So I will smack the caster with a Warhammer. <laughs> All right. Fuck sakes. He would prefer not to be smacked. And in this case, was not. And the spiritual weapon will try to smack him. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that's very successful. Spiritual weapon. Hey, smack. Do I get plus two on the damage, or I think so? It's whatever your your uh, wisdom bonus, okay. I believe. Yeah, so he takes uh, five. Depends, of on, depends on the spell, but. Uh... Well, no, for spiritual weapon. Uh, okay, so that's five points. Yeah. All right. Well, well then, uh, uh, as you uh, as you hit him. Uh, and and he kind of dodges, or you swing towards him, he dodges out of the way. Just what does your spiritual weapon look like, by the way? Hmm, I'm fantastic. Hmm, it's going to involve fire for sure. And what's <laughs> Ignis's weapon of choice? Uh, Ignis's weapon of choice would be the flaming hammer. Perfect, because I'm also using a hammer, so it's going to be like picture Thor's hammer, but on fire instead of lightning, and just like spinning around constantly. Okay. As he kind of moves to get out of the way of, of your particular strike, it hits him solidly in the shoulder, which he kind of uh, grabs uh, and, and lurches back, uh, swearing. As he does so, his eyes uh, uh, close for a second, he grimaces, and the creature down below vanishes. Yay! Thank you. Uh, before I got a chance to utterly annihilate one of you, which would have been funny. Uh, oh, I hurt so much. I've almost lost <laughs> two, uh, two pieces to it. They are really quite nasty, actually. Uh, Sedona's turn. Let's see. Sedona uh, has this gaze of the terrifying undead. Let's see. Who does she want to turn her gaze towards? She's going to turn her gaze towards Arniv and dive in towards Arniv's uh, body. Ew. As she does so, her body floods into Arneve. You see Arneve shudder and shake uh, as uh, there's little little wisps of gray which are poking in and out of her space uh, constantly. And she screams in agony. Oh, yeesh. Uh, as the... Cre as... Wow. Okay, yep, yep. Uh, as uh, uh, Sedona kind of tears her shredding from the inside... Uh, and then backs out. And as she backs out, uh, Arneve's skin kind of bubbles and twists and tears and multiple little little lesions as, as the Sedona pulls free from the, her. And you can see that although Arneve... Oh, yeah. You know, still did a nasty number. But as Arneve's eyes are glazed and, and, uh, and desperate looking now, uh, she's breathing heavily and bleeding from multiple wounds across her body. Uh, that was Sedona's frightening turn it is now this guy's turn what is he going to do uh, hmm yeah um let's see oh yeah he gets she gets to save at the end of her turn but that doesn't matter is it save at the end of your turn or bidding in your turn for frightened uh end okay uh, he's going to cross over to here, which unfortunately does see your strange, frightening creature face again, which put him at somewhat of a shaky advantage or disadvantage. But standing beside the other one, he turns towards you, Medric, uh, and then kind of calls over his shoulder, get out of here, boss, I'll catch up to you later, and then attempts to stab at Medric. Somewhat unshakily because he, he's he's looking over his shoulder out the doorway and seeing the frightening visage of uh, Silas still. And that's not going to do it. That's a single digit. And that is a single digit. So both strikes uh, go wishing on Bayou. Uh -huh. 
And who was he looking at when he mentioned boss? I uh, looked at the the mage beside you. Yeah. Uh, that is his turn. Background to Annie. Annie, the the tendril which had held you tight just momentarily, uh, just vanishes entirely, uh, leaving you a little bit cool. in the lurch. It um. bruised a little bit where it grabbed onto you, but thankfully you're able to drag your heels and not let it be, not you know, let yourself be eaten. I. Hmm. I'm going to go over here so that at the end of the day, our job is to get the cows back. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, and I am going to, I'd like to try to take the ropes from Flip. Okay. I'm sure he would like that not to happen. Uh, that'll uh, be an athletics or acrobatics, your choice versus cool. his. Acrobatics, please. Okay. Oh, that teetered on, on my, my die. Uh, but to 12. 12, I rolled a 13 for a total of 15. So you managed just to kind of rest them out of your hands and uh, and kind of keep them in motion. It's kind of like keep away at this point where you're like grabbing for them. He's like, nope, nope. Mine. Oh. I stole them fair and square. Uh, And then... I am going to jump onto one of the cows. <laughs> uh, okay, the cow is going to resist. This will be another acrobatics move uh, at this point. Uh, the, the cow resisting roll. That's an odd one. Uh, sure. Yeah, no problem. As the cow's kind of twisting and turning, it's getting a little agitated. Uh, and you kind of land yourself heavily on the back of the cow. Well, why'd you do that? Now I've got to take you with me or kill you. Um, let's see. <laughs> That's exactly why. Uh, and I, I tell Silas to go help uh, Medric and give him the help action. Okay. Uh, let's see. From within. Where is he going to do this from? Hmm. So beside you, Medric, you see the uh, the half elven mage. Um, if he could shoot daggers with his eyes, he probably would be. At the moment, though, he's just looking extraordinarily angry. Um, the diamond won't forget this, and he casts a spell and vanishes. And reappears outside. Silas, you see him in a, in a flash just sort of suddenly appear outside. And then take off okay. running. <laughs> He's somewhat beyond where that is. Probably another 10 feet. Just keep that in mind. Not quite out of sight just yet. Yeah. Uh, that is his turn. It's that one. Flip. Flip is not happy with you. Uh, flip outside with the cows in, in, in rains. Uh, looks at you. I think you need to leave me alone. And he stares daggers at you. I will need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Eight. No. The eyes bore into you, this intense stare. And you find yourself wavering and falling asleep. And you kind of slump down on the back of the cow and are asleep. Uh, that is Flip's turn. Uh, you see her waver Silas and then Flip goes over and kind of guides her to the ground. Not throwing her or tossing her, actually gently moving her to the ground. Uh, it is your turn, Silas. Okay. Uh, just... So there we go. Uh, 10, 20. You said he's 10 feet beyond the edge? That's right. Okay, that's 30 feet. That's just within range. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, oh, crap. No, that would... 
Well, I'll give it a try because that's all I've got right now. Um, I am going to... Uh, Yes, yeah, so so yep. Uh, I am going to uh, make a suggestion to uh, the mage whose name I can't read because it's actually off the map. Um, Porin, you heard him. Some people say it before. P o r r u n. Yeah. Um, where did it go? I am going to. Uh, yeah, bewitching voice. Uh, him uh, with suggestion uh, and say that you don't want I, you need to convince us of our wrongdoing you need to stay hmm, okay I just convince him to, co to come back and uh, debate uh, his reasoning with you yes exactly <laughs> you need to be right Oh, actually, <laughs> yes, I am wrong on the internet, and you need to correct me. Uh, you've become a troll. This is very hilarious. Um, okay, so what uh, what sort of save does he need to make? Wisdom, Wisdom I think? save. Okay. Uh, however, it counts as a charm effect, which I think he would have advantage against. Uh, and it's a difficulty is only thirteen. Okay. May he roll badly. That's a double 19s on the dice. Okay. Uh, as as you kind of shout that uh, that insult out to him, and it kind of turns back, I'll be right in the end. My master will make sure of it, and you will be nothing more than dead. Uh, uh, Sonny says, I am already dead. <laughs> Uh, and shakes his fist at him. Um, crap. Let's see. Uh, well, yeah. Other than that, yeah, he's just going to uh, stand here at a safe distance from Arnav uh, and at least try to make sure that she doesn't leave out the front way anyway. My turn is done. Okay, so you're staying where you're at then. Yeah. Okay. If uh, I get closer, she could hit me. Uh, it is her turn. Let's see. Um, I suppose she actually she can move and hit me anyway. Hmm. Well, no, she's uh, frightened. Yeah. I'm uh, coming, Medric. Well, she can still swing. She just has disadvantage. No, but she can't move closer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's why I was staying away. Yes. Yep. I knew there was a cunning plan there somewhere. <laughs> uh, let's see. What would she... Your brain wasn't just telling you to do it for no reason. Mm. Hmm. Let's see if she can figure that out. Uh, actually, no. After the attack that Sedona did on her, um, she's going to uh, growl angrily uh, and then uh, carefully back away and run. Just going to get around the corner from there. So she's disengaging. Cool. Uh, that is her turn. Medric. Well, there is a dude in front of me who just True. made the other dude run away, meaning I couldn't kill him and bring him to justice, I mean. So <laughs> I said flax. All right. Oh, man. Why? As he kind of easily dodges aside and, and kind of taps your uh, uh, your hammer. What weapon do you use? Is it a hammer? Yeah, the warhammer. Yeah, taps your warhammer slightly so it misses entirely. It's like, oh, you've got to do better than that. Spiritual weapon, Will. Maybe. Probably not. Uh, that's a hit. Hey. This turn wasn't a complete failure. <laughs> Smack like that. So as just as he's being all snide and rude to you, the spiritual weapon version of the hammer clocks him on the side of the head, and he hisses and swears at the uh, at the annoyance. Damn it! 
All right, that's uh, that's. Are you moving or doing anything else? No, I'm standing here. Otherwise, he gets an attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, Sedona is single-minded at the moment. You see her fly down the hallway, and uh -oh. terrible, terrible sounds follow her as she screams down the hallway. The sound echoes off the the walls, and you can actually see the uh, small pinpricks of crystal essentially that are embedded within the walls kind of glint and crack as she as she screams down the hallway almost banshee like oh uh and uh there's terrible tearing noises as she reaches around the corner uh anyone looking at silas uh kind of sees uh, he goes yes yes uh take care of them my minions and has a really uncomfortable look in his face right now <laughs> Uh, okay, that's the end of her turn. There's nasty ripping sounds from around the corner. Uh, yeah, what is he going to do? Uh, well, first of all... Hmm. I'll see you again some other time. As he kind of disengages... All right, bye. And going to move and start to get the hell out of there. Uh, actually, for him, he can get out of sight. Although Sedona might be able to still see him. Uh, that was uh, Flax's turn. Back around to Annie. Oh, yeah, you're asleep. <laughs> you're having really comfortable, like, relaxing sleep. You're in a, in a nice... Uh, feather bed, and you can kind of hear banging on the in outside of the door, but you just kind of sleepily say, no, no, I'll have supper later. We'll do for, to bring it to my hair. Uh, Porin takes off, so he is now, uh, I'm just going to take him off the map. He's out of sight at this point. Yeah, not catching up with him. Uh, so. Let's see. You see off to your right as Flip starts to lead the uh, cows away. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's see if I can do it without disturbing Annie. All right. Uh, cows don't move that f fast. He's, he's out of sight of you uh, at the moment, Silas, just because he's pulled in behind some trees. It's not hard to find, though. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Silas, it is your turn. Well, Mendrick seems to be okay. Uh, uh, don't get in too far. Uh, and gonna try to to cut off a uh, flip. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then five, six. Is it? Don't make me beat you to death. <laughs> and then uh, I club them. <laughs> this is with the shillelagh? Yeah. To, Please surrender. <laughs> Please, sir. Uh, let it go. Uh, really There's only a 10 to hit, though. What's going on? We don't want to hurt people. Yes. Um, a 10 doesn't hit. A 10 does miss as he kind of... Uh, Ducks weirdly out of the way, ducks down, and you kind of swing over his head. He hisses at you as, as you do. No! Uh, that's Silas's. That's not turn. your house, sir. That was a, in a an attack and a movement. Do you have a bonus action? No. Okay, Medric. Oh, sorry, Arneve. Oh, <laughs> poor Arneve. Uh, first of all, that she managed to not be afraid anymore. Nope. Uh, well, she can't see me anyways, so. But the effect still sticks around. Uh, it, it would be revived if she saw you again. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But she doesn't get disadvantage on anything, though. Right, but the effect is unfortunately still there. Or the, yeah. the possibility of the effect. Yeah. Anyway, um, she's in desperate need to get the hell out of there, so uh, she is going to again disengage. Oops, disengage and start plowing outward. I think of which one. There's one part of the map I did not draw, so I apologize, but it, it is actually there. Okay. That's as far as she gets. 
Uh, and that makes it Medric's turn. All right. Just got to check on one thing. As soon as I can find it. Anyway. Spiritual weapon can move 30 feet, right? Or 60? Uh, it can move. 20. Hmm? 20? It's only 20. Okay. It's a pain in the butt when people run away from it. Two. Everybody's running away from me, so three, four, five, six. And I'll just bring it with me, like. It kind of lags behind. Yeah. Yeah, and you, it's like, you see uh, Annie on the ground uh, in the crump, in a clump. Just like Sorry. lightly tap her on the face, like, hey, Annie, you okay? <laughs> Annie, you feel your, yourself being woken up way too early. I'll, I'll get lunch later, jeez. Don't, don't get lunch, get the dude who's running away with the cows. Where am I? And you suddenly come to realize I'm that you're in the middle of a forest with Medrick standing. <laughs> I'm not in a very cushy bed. Well, the no. grass is nice, but yeah. All right, Sedona is on the warpath. Has enough movement. Oh. <sighs> Ooh. Hey guys, let's just peek in the door and let the ghost kill everything. Uh, as she misses, however, but, uh, not hear the sound. Hmm? <laughs> no, it's like re response to Silas. <laughs> uh, inside. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's just going to squeeze on by. And hopefully... Hey, he's no longer afraid of the thing he can't see any anymore. <laughs> Good for him. All right. Ugh, buttons. Too many buttons. Let's see. Background to Annie. Annie, you are now awake uh, with Medrick. Awake standing over you not far away you can you can actually still see the cows <laughs> they haven't made it that far yep. uh so half my movement so 15 feet to stand, stand up. up yep uh, one two three is that that actually where he is or is he further no nope, he just made it to the edge of the the visible map cool i would like to try to grab the cows again okay once again, he will try to not have the cows be grabbed. Uh, oh, you got a 20? Now I got to actually do math. Uh, 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 it's a tie. Tie goes to defenders. Oh, actually, no, meets beats. It, it goes to goes to attacker. So you grab a hold of the reins. Yep. Um, and he kind of, he's a little bit distracted by the by the swinging uh, uh, staff that's right by his head. And he kind of swinging is flailing. Flailing, well, uh, a flail is also dangerous. Uh, as you yeah. manage to kind of rest the, uh, the 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 reins out from him, really a rope. Uh, and I would then like to dash as a bonus action. Uh, okay, you move at the speed of the cows, mind you. Yep. What's the speed of the cows? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yep. Yeah. So I can still get back one, two. So you're gonna three. lead the cows back to where they were. Yep. Okay, and we'll just drag the cows. Behind you, as they're like protesting, it's like too much movement. <laughs> not used to all this working and running around and stuff. At least that would be the translation if anybody spoke cow. <laughs> uh, if we had a druid, <laughs> he's gone. Uh, In another, <laughs> yeah. Those are mine. I stole them fair and square. <sighs> and she, he kind of growls at you, Silas. <laughs> He kind of growls at you, Silas, because you're right there, and then kind of looks back of his shoulder. Fine. I'll steal more later. And he turns and runs. And I'm going like, to whack him. Uh, he's going to disengage. Okay. Because, uh, oh. yeah, if you can disengage, do it, because, good God, these are dangerous times. Uh, <laughs> as he kind of sprints off, uh, make, a, make an insight check, Silas. No. Okay. Yeah, he just sort of, 
He just sort of barrels off through the woods in a in a direction not not towards the woods or towards the road. Uh, the, so he is gone. Uh, they're getting numbered less. Silas, you're up. You can still make him out. He'd have partial cover from any uh, sight based attacks. Uh, or you could chase after him if you wanted to. How far away is he? Um, he made it about, uh, actually about 40 feet away. He was running really fast. Hmm. Um, I'm actually not so worried about him. Uh, he actually made sure that Annie didn't fall off and break her neck. So, uh, I'm just going to go back to here and pick up the loaded crossbow that I left there. Okay. Uh, and then, uh. Let's see, maybe out there. Yeah, look up to there and uh, just look over and say, Annie, Medrick, are you okay? And he's keeping his crossbow. Actually, he's keeping his crossbow on the flaming uh, hammer that's ne next to him uh, in <laughs> case it does something, but it's, it hasn't moved. Actually, yeah, he's it's going to be back here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I've been better. Don't worry, the hammer's mine. It's not going to hit you. Oh, good. I thought it might be, but we've seen a lot of weird things today. Yeah, they all ran away from me. Uh, we should go check to make sure they left. Is it my turn, by the way? Or... It is your turn. Yep. Yeah. I will. I will dash. One, two. Three. And I'll bring this with me, or as far as I can. Yeah, I had an earth elemental that was following me around. It was always terrible because it would be way the hell back there as I moved forward. <laughs> but uh, do I see like any? Do I see any sign of Sedona or? Uh... Oh yeah, oh yeah. She's she's right there, hanging out in front of uh, of Arniv and just in a strange sort of state again this completely agitated form on now no longer really resembling any sort of humanoid form uh legs are no longer there instead uh, it's sort of just the upper torso and arms and each of the arms are extended slightly and have a, a jagged pointed edge towards them the 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 head seems to be missing most of its features except for a large mouth of jagged teeth she looks utterly transformed and transfixed. And Sedo and uh, your friend, your former colleague, Arniv, is looking terrified and trying to back away. More and more wounds and lots of extra blood flowing out of her. You can see now that her eyes are utterly clear. The fog of battle has now receded from her. Was that Arniv or Sedona? Arniv. Uh, okay. Arniv is the, the half-orc and Sedona is the ghost. Yeah. But the one that, that has, like, the clear eyes, that was uh, Arneve, right? Yes. Okay. As you remember that she would take on a battle stance in which you could not be convinced until that passed. A bloodlust. Gotcha. Arneve, Sedona, stop! Okay, you can make a persuasion check. That's going to be all of plus one, I believe, at disadvantage. Oh, my God. Maybe I'll be really lucky. Fuck me. Wow. Oh my god, why? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> roll twenty hates me today. <laughs> that's uh that's an impressive display of of uh of what the fuckery. Um Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, neither of them seem to hear you. Uh Sedona too fixated on her rage and Arneve too fixated on her fear. Uh that said, it is Sedona's attempt now. Oh. Well, uh, risk is scenario if our knee drops, I can always just like give her his meals. <laughs> uh, as once again, Sedona kind of tries to dive in towards uh, towards our body, and this time our flailing madly, manages to keep the uh, the mace up in front of her, preventing the the invasion once more. Uh, 
Okay, this guy is gone. Uh, around the corner, you hear a uh, the sound of stone moving, sliding against stone. Um, Annie. Hey. My turn? Your turn. You have cool. cows. I have cows. Um, hmm. I am going to tie them off here. Uh, so that they're a bit further from people and behind trees and shit. I suppose I should give you control over the cows, but <laughs> um Actually they're they're kind of reluctantly moving. Make an animal handling check. Cool. Eleven. You managed to get them there, but it's hard to get them steady enough to to uh, to be tied up. They're still loose at the moment, uh, kind of resisting you. Cool. Uh, is there anything that I can try to do to calm them down? It's kind of what the animal handling check was for, but if you have anything else you'd like to creatively create, I'd, I'd be open to it. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. They're understandably shaken and stirred. <laughs> Silas. Everybody's left. Um... It does appear as though the flaming spinning hammer was following uh, Medric like mm -hmm. a dog, so you think that's probably okay. Uh, I'll yell over, Annie, I'm going after Medric. Okay, I'm trying to deal with the cows. I move in. Hey, it's Medric. Uh, that's as close as I can get. Uh, actually, I don't have any actions I can do really. So, um, yeah, let's use my other action to move over here and uh, behold my power. Woo! Surrender. Oh, yeah, I should have to roll for her. Uh, yeah, oh. she might not be under the spell anymore. You might also have to uh, talk some sense, some sense into Sedona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, are you attempting an intimidation roll or something? I'm trying to persuade her to uh, surrender. I mean, she doesn't have to surrender immediately because she's being attacked by a ghost, but maybe if we can get the ghost to calm down, she should surrender to us. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, my persuasion skill is... Well, it's okay. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe an 18. It's better than my two. <laughs> Um, you can see her nervously looking beyond the thing that's attacking her and seeing you. And her eyes are kind of already wide and a little bloodshot. Um, oh, and I will drop the, uh, the I will drop back to uh, Silas normal looking. Okay. Uh, although you're still kind of multiformed and, and shifting and uh -huh. shimmering in place. Um, that I am. You hear from uh, Arniv. Take this away from me. I will surrender. And that is her turn. And oh, and she's no longer afraid of you. Actually, she's still still frightened. What am I saying? Because uh, uh, yeah, still right in front of her. Medric, you've heard your colleague call for surrender, but the creature that's attacking her does not seem to recognize that. I'll move a little closer. And this thing's going to follow me. One, two, three. <laughs> and 
there's a look of desperation in Arnie's eyes, one you've never seen this this warrior ever show before. But you can also see the large gashes and and uh, and rushing blood from multiple wounds. Nasty looking wounds too, not just simple cuts or bruises, but looking almost like the flesh has erupted from within. If you can keep her alive, I can try to deal with Sedona. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'll cast uh, Cure Wounds at level 1 on uh, Arneve. Okay, that does require touch, so you have to reach out and touch her. Um, she seems suspicious. I will have you make a persuasion roll that she's not going to pull away from you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Guys, Is that before I spend the spell slot or after? <laughs> uh, it's during. Hey, one and then uh, is is she persuaded by a thirteen? She is persuaded by a thirteen. Okay. I rolled a ten, and even with the bonus, it's not enough. So that's at, at level one. So she gets healed five points. Okay. And I take one. And as the flame kind of rips out along your fingers and sort of sizzles around her skin you can see some of the wounds kind of almost cauterizing closed um, she winces slightly but more from the reaction of seeing it than the actual pain which is what you feel rather than her yeah um, and I'll look at Sedona and say like please and like kind of make a face that's that, that's screaming please stop that's we, we won we just, just don't don't kill her that's gonna be another persuasion check and that one's a lot harder awesome <laughs> okay well, I can't unpersuade her, I guess. <laughs> you persuade her to attack even more vigorously. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, oh, okay. All right. Bad. Pretty good. Mm, passable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's it's not a one. Unfortunately, as you kind of call out to her and you see yourself uh, reach out and cast the spell to heal her, um, her head shifts unnaturally in the cloud that has become her, her body. And you can see now where there were eyes are nothing more than empty sockets. The face is long and drawn out, um, no longer even really resembling a humanoid form. And she turns towards you. Do I know anything about this? Or is that going to be a check for later on, assuming I survive? I mean, do you know much about ghosts? I know about religion, I guess. Um, you can make a religion check. I'll allow it. Right, that's still a disadvantage. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you don't know what the hell I'm this is. I got the best religion. What's that? I'm religious. I got the best religion of all time. <laughs> yeah, don't even start. Uh, you. You don't know what this is. Um, you know that she is dead, undead, I guess would be the technical term for it. Um, but this other shape you're not familiar with. Um, it is terrifying, the implications that this could actually uh, happen. But, but she's not the shadow form that she was like the night before. She's not the shadow form, no. No, she still seems to have some light left in her. But now it seems to be utterly focused, and she turns her attention towards you. Oh, but hesitates as she seems to recognize you, at least for the moment. Uh, well, I'm glad I didn't hit her. <laughs> Annie. Hello. You're tying up the cows? I'm tying up the cows. Make your perception check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Materializing a few feet away, you, out of the corner oh, yeah. of your eye, pick up something and see yeah. a dark shape start to take a humanoid form. It steps almost as though it steps out of not entirely dissimilar the 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 tear that you'd heard before but it's it's muted it's subtler it's um more controlled 
as this humanoid hooded figure steps forward with small pinpricks the of light the only thing you can see inside the hood approximating where eyes would be yeah i have all the shadow things that are, are here and i'll throw a dagger at it okay 19. hit hits Uh, three. Uh, the the dagger kind of sinks in and seems to almost vanish within the darkness of the cloak. It does react a little bit, as though it was hit, but it it seems to react only in a curious manner, not so much in a pained manner. And it speaks with a voice that seems to flow in like heavy mist on a cold, cold morning. Rather than being carried directly to you, it seems to flow inward towards you. Interesting. To find you in my domain. I will make use of your presence. You will become a tool for me. Whether you want to or not. I hope your parents come quickly. And it vanishes. You're going to put a cow in between you and it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> All right. Move. Go ahead. Move. <laughs> um, Silas. Oh crap! Uh, draw from both ends. Uh, this one first. Then after. okay, so we go up to there, and uh, to Sedona, please. We are your friends. We just want to help you. Uh, he's going to try to persuade her that uh, she should back down. Uh, we will handle uh, the invaders. All right. Ooh. And he gets a crap persuasion roll. Okay. He's breathing too hard running in here. And again, yeah. the, the whole body kind of shifts and twists, this time forming its gaze directly on you. You get the sense that there's some sense of familiarity, but there's also a blindness, in a way, to everything that's going around. Medric, in that instant, you kind of recognize, in some ways, the same sort of phenomenon that comes over Arneve, in that they are in the bloodlust of the moment and unable to turn away. But... It feels like she's on the cusp. She hesitates, at least for a moment. It is, it's all like that. It is Arneve's turn. Arneve is backing away, carefully, keeping eye out. Uh, this would be a, a disengage action, essentially. Moving in towards the room. And you can hear her stepping and stumbling and crashing over wood furniture that's in there. Things are breaking and crashing. And you hear her swear and pound on stone. Arneve, wait! Medric, you're up. So did she go through here? Yes. Okay. I'll can, follow her. Can you see there? There shouldn't be a door there. Okay. Uh, there's a little doorway right here. Yeah, there's no blocked yeah, door. I, I mean, yeah. You can see that she's beating away at some of the stone there. Um, looks like she's trying with both the fist in, in her left hand and the hammer in her right to hit a stone of one kind or another. Doesn't seem like she knows what she's doing. I'll just kind of follow her and say, like, I heard the stone move and then shuffle back. Wait, we're, you surrendered. Nobody's going to hurt you anymore. We're trying to deal with the ghost. She is usually not that lethal. <laughs> also, hey, what's up? Long time no chat. <laughs> That's a curious way to put it. She's not usually that lethal. <laughs> not since last night. Make a persuasion check. Fuck. As she looks over her shoulder and she's, she's wild-eyed wild towards that direction. 
I meant to leave out the part about not since yesterday, but I guess I didn't. Unfortunately, uh, it's it. She seems too I desperate. Dug, I dug myself a bigger hole. And she's she's muttering to herself, "Where is it? Where is it? Damn it! Porin had it here somewhere." Uh, and she's desperately beating away at stones on there. Some of them are crumbling under the under the uh, repeated hammer blasts from the the mace that she's wielding. But uh, hopefully, since we're not attacking her, she realizes we're not a threat. So maybe my actions will be more persuasive than my words. <laughs> now it's Sedona's turn. Oh. Sedona pauses and kind of looks at you, Silas. The head turns as if she's trying to make sense of what or who you are. And the ragged shape of the body starts to coalesce and shrink down and soften uh, as does the face go from its distended long jawed form back closer and closer to the humanoid female form she had before it looks like she's calming okay I am very supportive of that <laughs> okay Co, co team. Oh, on my turn, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. I'd be as I can with a free action. Annie. Hello. Uh, I'm kind of shook. Uh, I'm going to try to tie the cows down again. Okay. Um, make an insight check. The cows are lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> There was a familiarity with that creature of you that that seems apparent as you're trying to calm yourself down, you're trying to breathe in and trying to keep your, your heart rate, bring it down. The cows seem to be, uh, they've got a, a sheen of cold sweat has passed over them. Even though they didn't react in the moment it was there, as soon as it's kind of left, their tiny little brain sort of snapped onward and went, wait a minute. Like you've stepped to the edge of a cliff you just realized was there only after you've stepped away. But for you, it knew who you were. It marked you in that moment and knew who you were. With shaking, trembling hands, you do manage to tie the cows up. And they start eagerly munching away at some, some uh, fresh grass. Turning with their backs to where the thing had been facing the wall as if that would make all of it better. Um, and then I'm going to join everybody else. Ish. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Bonus section. One, two, three, one, two, three. Zoom. Zoom, zoom. All right. Silas. Actually, I'm going to stay here. Uh, I look at uh, uh, Sedona and say, "Just wait here a, a moment. Then we'll go find your your uh, your body." And I start running around the corner. Okay. Oh, hi. Are you okay? No. Okay. Later, though. Uh, that's all I've got for action. <laughs> okay. Actually, I do, but uh, all right. Uh, I say uh, we stopped Sedona from murdering the half orc. Now Medrick's talking with her. The half orc, not Sedona. Actually, I'll use my action to just uh, head back a little ways so I can keep an eye up there. Okay. Sedona hasn't quite moved, um, but you you get the sense of her body reaffirming itself. The 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 flow of the gray mist starts to move downward towards the floor, reassembling what is the echo of legs. Um, Arnie turns to you, Medric, mm -hmm. with wide eyes. Let me go. I made a mistake taking on this job. But I, that thing. You had the thing uh, in the hallway? Yes. yes. <laughs> Me and my friends 
well, we took a different job, and I guess this brought us against each other, but we fought it in a different form yesterday. And yeah, I know how it feels. But uh, we're not going to hurt you anymore. Which job was this, by the way? He told us that we were just to find something. He didn't tell us a lot of details, but said that there could be something here. Something defending it. But I... I don't know what that thing was. I've never seen anything like it. And I've fought the dead before. That's different. Mm -hmm. What was the thing you guys were going to find? Some artifact. Something for the diamond. That's all I know. Cool. Uh, who's who's the diamond, by the way? We've only heard that name a few times. Usually, usually when they're giving us death threats. I've never met them, but... They're a power in this area. It wasn't long when I started looking for work that I was approached. They seemed to know who I was, seemed to know what my work could be, seemed to know that I desperately needed something. So I signed on. It wasn't much at first. A little bit of guard work. A little bit of... Uh, she looks a little sheepish. A little bit of making sure that certain payments were made. But this is different. I don't know what that thing is. I don't know what it's looking for, but I don't want to have anything to do with it. What, the, the diamond or the ghost from the hallway? Well, and I'll just kind of like casually peer out in the hallway and see if in, seeing if uh, Sedona's still there. <laughs> or like evil Sedona versus good Sedona. And we can move out of initiative at this point because no okay. no particular threats are happening. Sedona is is now fully formed. And she's looking at her hands. There's nothing on them. They just seem to appear to be these gray, ghostly hands. But she seems disturbed. Um, she looks up as you come around the corner. And you can see where once had been a sort of black and white reflection of eyes. Now there are nothing more than, than dark circles. And around those dark circles is a sort of ridge of fluttering gray almost as though they are no longer orbs so much as they are are voids opening into another dimension no oh, that's not good but she's still like herself though right she's more like herself than she has been yes but she looks utterly sad um ernie if she, she's not the murder version anymore you can come out now i'm not coming out there i'm leaving and she starts to touch along the wall again after a couple uh, of sure a couple of the minutes. other guy the secret passage, so you might be safer just going out through the main doors. And uh is that Benier I heard earlier? Benier? The one who like ran away at first? Um The Scout. She continues to kind of poke and prod at the wall, uh, then uh nods Yeah. yeah. Benier didn't seem to be as bothered by this job as I was, but She's done more dangerous work in some ways. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, she was always really good at her job, and so were you. You know, I tell her time came to follow orders, but that's just the previous rant. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to go somewhere. I've got to leave this place. The diamond will come after me. And she kind of shrugs and and and. Uh, leans up against the wall, uh, kind of defeated. Well, they come at, if they go after you, are they going to go after everybody else in this party? Can't you just say you like ran away from some from a horde of undead? I failed. I don't think that there's any sort of. There's nothing I could say to them that would change that fact. And she kind of. Uh, takes her her mace and swings it backward. Damn it! And click, you hear the, the uh, sound of of stone moving against stone, and the entire wall where she is starts to bow outward, revealing a, a secret passage. Basically, just tell them you, right there. Your, all your compatriots ran away. Just tell them you did the same thing. As she runs away. Uh, well, she she kind of laughs a little bit at seeing the opening there, finally finding it completely by accident. I wish I had met you again under better circumstances, Medric. Maybe I will again. But be careful. That thing you're traveling with is not safe. And 
I mean, I'll make sure Sedona is not within earshot, and I'll mouth like, "I know." <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and she kind of steps out through the the gap. Farewell, and may you make better choices than I have. We'll just. <clears throat> And she starts, she runs off into the woods. Leaving you there. Sedona finally seems to be more or less herself, but then she begins to sort of weep and wail. It, it is not a human reaction. It is stronger and deeper and louder and resonates throughout these halls. It is a pain of loss of yourself that she screams outward. I don't know. I, what happened? I don't understand. I wanted to hurt them. I wanted to destroy them. Well, you did good for a while. No. You didn't kill anybody, though. That's not... Who I want to be. Please. Do you remember when the shadow had a hold of you yesterday? That was different. I knew that I wasn't in control. This time I was. Did you maybe you just wanted to defend yourself? Oh, by the way, the spiritual weapon is gone now. Okay. I would have dropped it anyway because there's no more threats. Yeah, my extra copies only last for 60 seconds, so they're gone. Fair enough. Duly noted. Um, Assuming you all kind of regather, is there a particular place you want to gather for any discussion? Maybe like in the center of that big room where the fountain is. Or, okay. I mean, the blue dot around the other blue dots is. <laughs> it is indeed <laughs> a broken fountain. A little bit of water spilling out around its edge. If you want to move Oops. yourselves there. <laughs> chaos Dance floor. <laughs> as the disco lights start bouncing and flashing around and any light that's illuminated the fountain itself seems to be uh, while broken uh, it was once some form of statue and you can see the water gathering around its basin still, still flowing clearly uh, even after all these years there are several pillars around the room you can see them kind of uh, surrounding the room, holding the space up. It looks as though, when you look around, it looks as though a mighty battle happened here. There are scorch marks even now on the walls and pits and uh, and grooves cut into it where massive spells and mighty weapons probably once overtook this whole place. She gazes into the fountain uh, and kind of reaches down towards the water, her hand kind of passing through it, uh, the water moving only slightly out of her way as she moves through it kind of kneeling down towards it. Sedona? Yes? Maybe, maybe we have to find your body and and give you a proper send-off so you can go on. Or maybe I'm cursed to stay here forever only to become something of hate and pain. This place, it feels so familiar yet looks so different. I must have known it a long time ago. It's empty and cold, but I, I can feel something from over there. And she points, which one on the map would be northward towards a pile of stones that blocking another pathway. Like right here? Yeah. You can see there's a, a small gap in the stones through which some light moves. Inside you can see another fountain, this time massive water overflowing once again, but on top sits a, a tall statue of a woman. Um, I'll just kind of start moving rocks. Okay. Some of these are massive boulders, several hundred pounds in weight. Oh. 
how they were moved into place, you can only imagine magic must have done it. Either that or, no, this place is too small for giants to have moved them. No, I'll move, I'll move the uh, smaller boulders out of the way first, and then hopefully with those out of the way, I can, like, I probably can't lift hundreds of pounds, or at least no more than 400, but maybe I can, like, push them, you know, because, like, gravity and, like, force vectors. Mm. I wouldn't know about those. How, yeah, how's Medrick going to explain force vectors? <laughs> <laughs> he will not, because he's got an int of eight. <laughs> Roll your engineering skill. Uh <laughs> He knows roll. He knows rocks roll if you push hard enough. That's right. Yeah. All we need is a hill. Um, Anybody got a hill? No, but I think I have a crowbar. Maybe. Works. Sedona kind of flies, yeah. float, floats over, and it it feels now like even though she's kind of reformed with legs that she's kind of distracted and forgetting to use them. So it's more like she's floating along uh, rather than actually walking and kind of passes through the, the crack in the door. Yes, I remember this place. Can we hear her? Uh, vaguely, but yes. All the faces... And she starts flying around the room outside of sight. I remember some of these. But not their names. How big is the... The air... Uh, the, the opening that we're looking through? It's... Uh, the opening itself is about uh, a foot and a half wide. Uh, and about uh, okay. two feet tall. About how deep? Uh, how deep? Like how? Like, could I stick my head in there and look around? Um, you, the walls themselves are about two feet thick. Okay. So you wouldn't quite get your head all the way in. Uh, but you can look inward from the outside, and you do see a, a, a large statue, as I mentioned before, of a woman um, with folded wings that are just sort of tucked in behind her shoulders, almost like a cape. Um, her hand is raised upward. Uh, her uh, her um, right hand is raised upward, and her left arm is outstretched, but you can see that there's no hand on the left arm. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's been broken off from here, but maybe. doesn't seem to be as much damage, though, from what you can see, from what the other ones were. The fountain just seems to have been overflowing. Maybe it was stopped up. It's hard to say. Um, there's not much light in there. Uh, do you have low light? You don't have low light. No, you're human. Uh, no, but I can cast the light cantrip. Oof. So the light cantrip has to be cast on something. Hmm. Cast on a stone, throw it in. <laughs> you can I was going to say, like, is there like a pebble or like a decent there's, size there's, rock? Uh, there's lots of rocks right here. Uh, yeah. Silas does seem to be attempting to, to look around, okay. even if it's dark. You can just sort of make out, and, and partly it's the, the sort of reflection of the water that's there and the, the movement of Sedona, uh, that uh, there's what at first kind of is a little creepy, uh, and then when the stone is tossed in with the light on it, you can make out faces, hundreds of faces on the walls, um, all of them with uh, outstretched uh, hands, uh, kind of uh, like this, in some sort of... Um, Wait, I was in the wrong window. Okay. Can you do that hand motion again? Get it there, get it. Okay. So the hands are kind of uh, <laughs> par 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 paralleling their face. Um, and the faces kind of partially come out of the stone. And there are hundreds of these in, in, uh, in all uh, directions. It wasn't intentionally doing voguing, but I guess that's what it turns into. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, there seem to be hundreds of them lining the walls in all directions. Are you going to attempt to dig... Uh, passageway in? Yeah, at least so I can squeeze my like six foot six bulky ass frame in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll help. Okay. Uh, each of you make, uh, let's make it a um, athletics check if you're going to be helping. Basically, it's four successes. That just determines how long it's going to take. 
Remember, uh, uh, Medrick, you're making these a disadvantage because you're exhausted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm assisting Medrick so that he gets advantage as well. So uh, it just, so it, it just is even then? Straight yep. up roll? Straight up roll. All right. uh, difficulty is only 10. So there's one success. Keep going. And if you're helping, you can also uh, make your own rolls if you want. Uh, sorry, I zoned out there. I was writing a thing. No worries. Uh, no worries. We're trying to get the boulders off. Yep, trying, yep. To, trying to make a passageway big enough that even Medric can fit in. Uh, so that's two positive rolls. That's two successes. So two hours so far. Uh, I would like to use my crowbar. Okay. Uh, to give myself advantage on sure trying things. Is it twenty a double success? Uh, two uh, twenty. Uh, with that, uh, with those last few boulders kind of holding uh, firmly, uh, you plant the the crowbar in between two of them, lever it up just enough, and then Medric with a mighty mighty uh, grab pulls the whole stone right out of the way. Others roll and rattle out of the way, giving you an opening that, while still squeeze uh, to get in, is big enough for Medric and the others to all pile in. And you all Damn. step. Your advice with angles and stuff and how to push is pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> uh, yes. So you step into the room. Now the light that from the stone that you've tossed in before, um, now as you as you uh, see it, is reflected in hundreds of ways. As you realize that each, or almost all of the faces on the walls. Um, the eyes have small crystals or maybe gems within them, multiple colors, uh, multiple sizes and shapes, but every single one of them and all of them looking inward towards the room, lining the walls. Um, Sedona is still kind of moving from side to side and from space to space. I'll go over to Sedona and say, do you how do you feel here do what do you feel and she kind of spins and, and whirls towards you and you can see her face is elated i i feel i feel familiar i i, I feel friends i feel home i knew these people uh, some of them some of them were before my time here but I remember him, and she kind of moves over to one side and, and points to uh, an older man's face. You can see there's just the, the points of ears there. Um, looks to be a, an elven face from the, the features and from the ears. He was a teacher of mine. He taught me... Uh, I don't remember, but I remember he had kind words and, and a sharp wit. And she kind of moves from side to side, just sort of pointing out different ones here and there. Um, Is your face in here? And she kind of spins and looks around. I don't know. Uh, uh, Silas is sitting down and resting while she does this, and, and we talk. Okay. She starts to look around the room, but it's going to take a long time for her alone to look. I'll look. <clears throat> I mean, we can kind of see her face in the ghost. Okay. I'll also try to help look for, for Those things. of you who are looking, make investigation rolls. Uh oh, that's int. I am not the sm I am not a smart. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Hey, look at that. Holy fuck. The int roll is my highest roll, like of all the <laughs> As you guys <laughs> As you guys look around the room and start to uh, assess what it is, um, you see a wide variety of faces. Uh, some of them, most of them are older. There are a few young faces here. Um, some of them have bright smiles on their faces. Others look stern. Um, they're all rendered extraordinarily well and almost as though uh, uh, made uh, of a mask. Uh, it's so well rendered. Um, and as you look around, actually, all three of you uh, find interwoven in between some of the rows of the faces, there are some uh, some runes in uh, 
recognizable to be common, but it seems like an archaic style. Uh, and in uh, so you find some some sayings, and I'll read the three sayings that you find. The first one, and I'll send you the full details. So you can refer to them later. Cool. I am my father's legacy and my mother's delight. I am the window in the mirror. In me, there is my world. Through me, there is the world. I carry the weight of my sorrow and the height of my joy. That's one that's uh, along the back wall. On the left-hand wall, yours is the opposite of mine, and mine is the opposite of what is missing. Bring me yours. And the third one on the right wall, to hold my past in your hands, press lightly upon the present. And the strangest thing of all, as you're looking through all these faces, let's see who got the best role. That would be Silas. As you're walking along and walking around, you glance up towards the statue. And because you've been looking for Sedona's face, you see it there on the statue. And that's where I'm going to bring it to a close for this week. Bye. <laughs> I, don't want to push it. I don't want to push any more technical problems or technical potentiality just because we've done fairly well to this point. Uh, we've gotten kind of where I thought we would, and I had a little bit more prepared, So, but I, I'm not quite ready for the next stage. Uh, so we'll leave you with uh, this discovery of the Room of Faces. Uh, and we will try to get back onto a regular schedule. Facebook. No, I was careful about that. Uh, <laughs> I, although at one point there was going to be a book of faces, and I went, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you guys for, for playing. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for your, uh, your uh, surviving. I was a little worried because the Roper is meant to be dangerous. But you guys uh, had good tactics. The cows are safe. Uh, what's that? The cows are safe. Right, the cows. cows the cows are safe. Well, hopefully, they haven't been stolen in the three hours we were moving rocks. <laughs> I, I feel like anywhere in fact, because you need a little break. Three hours was a lot of work, so you know you need a break to stretch once in a while, go out for a smoke or something, and discover the cows are still there. I got a light. <laughs> we could bring the cows in here too. They would yeah. fit in through the front doors. They are double doors and they're smashed. So we'll just say that you kind of brought the cows in. I'll move them as appropriate for next week. But uh, that's it for this week. Again, I want to thank my players for joining me. Once again, uh, tell everybody who you are, starting with uh, Silas. Uh, my name is Pat. I play Silas the Illusionist. My name is Marie. I play Annie the Rogue. Hey, my name is Nax, and I play Medrek, half-orc cleric. And now let's get started with a brand new session because I felt like it was an introduction. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you can find us on Twitch. Uh, let's see if I can remember all the d bits and details. Twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. You'll find us there. Uh, I think our new schedule is going to be for the summertime between 4 uh, and 7 Atlantic time. Uh, so be sure to adjust your uh, clocks appropriately. That's when we're going to be uh, streaming live. And I will get us up to date for the videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. If you care to join us socially, uh, Marie, what can they do? Uh, so we have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Legend of the Drowned Isles is the page. The group is uh, Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Um, you can find us there. We post when we're filming and stuff or if anything happens. Um, I'm currently taking a bit of a Facebook break, so other people are doing that. So. <laughs> Which is fair. It, it, it's not been decided who, but it's no longer my, my thing for a tiny bit. Um, that, that has generally been our approach to social media. Not it is generally the call we make, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been doing it... Shot, but I, I might forget. I might have to remind me. Yeah. <laughs> what I will try to do is in Watchers, I will post uh, both a... a and the image of the map, as well as an image of the uh, the riddles you've just discovered. Um, yes. Just for, for people to play along at home, I guess. If you do uh, uh, follow us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And I guess uh, for Jody, ring the bell. It's really important because it, it 
tells you things, I guess. I'm not sure exactly mm-hmm. how that works. I should know more. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Thank you so much for joining me, folks. And uh, we will play again next week. Uh, we should have like a sign-off phrase. What would be a good phrase for this alt game? Uh, what would be a good thing to send people off on? Anybody got an mm-hmm. idea? No? Off the top of my head right now? No. No. <laughs> Have fun, play games, play with your friends. I guess that's Stay it. Safe. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Talk to you again soon. <laughs> we'll have one next year, I swear. Fair. Watch fair. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Ow.